So today we're going to do a short demo of some of the content we have in this build of Path of Exile 2. We're starting here at about level 11, which is around halfway through Act 1. Right away as Jonathan plays with the graveyard, you're going to notice the massive improvements we've made to the Path of Exile engine since 3.0 was released. Environments, characters and items all use physically based rendering, which gives the whole game a realistic look. We have new main character class models with all new animations and completely new item base types. Most of these have physics for many of the little details, which makes them a lot more awesome. We put a lot of work into updating the skill effects throughout Path of Exile. For example, when you fire a split arrow, you really feel the individual arrows because some stick in the walls and others bounce off realistically. The 4.0 campaign contains a variety of optional side quests that lead to meaningful boss encounters along the way. Very soon we're going to encounter Lockwood, an NPC who has lost his family. Isabel and the boys were only to be gone for a few minutes, but it has been... I don't even know how long. Hours at least. Days. Weeks. What season is it? Stranger, I know we have just met, but I'm so worried about them. Around here, they could have fallen into a sinkhole or been choked by grave dust. Please, could you see to their safety? The game has changed a lot more than just visually though. One of the things we have wanted to do for a really long time is to make fundamental changes to Path of Exile's skill system. The skill system in PoE is really cool and versatile. Personally, it's my favourite thing about the game, but there have always been some awkward things about it. We really wanted to find a way to address all of the shortcomings while not sacrificing even a single bit of the functionality that we already have. When you see the inventory here, you will notice something missing. All of the sockets on the items. This is because in Path of Exile 2, you no longer put gems into your items. Instead, the skill gems themselves have sockets, as you can see here, and there is a dedicated screen for socketing them. Jonathan's going to change his split arrow skill for Ice Shot, and we'll add some support gems to it. There are some really big advantages here. For one, every single item in Path of Exile 2 could be a six link. This is going to cause huge changes in how players design character builds. In the past, players didn't ever want to have more than one primary attack skill because they could only have one or two six links on a character at most. Now, it's totally viable to have multiple powerful primary attacks. The thing I'm really happy about though, is you don't have to screw around with your gems all the time when you're changing items. Check out this bow here. The socket colours you get still come from your items, but now every single bow that drops will have exactly four green sockets. This means that we can swap this bow for this other one we have found, and we don't have to mess around with our gems. As we swap between the bows, we can see at a glance all the DPS values for our skills updating. It's still possible to fine-tune socket colours and items when you need to, but because everything that drops has fixed sockets, it's way easier to just pick something up and put it on while levelling. For new players, another really great advantage is that it's now impossible to socket a support gem into a skill gem that it doesn't work with. For example, this multiple projectiles gem can't be socketed into Leap Slam, but you can see with all the highlighted sockets that it will work with the other bow skills. Some of you will be wondering about skills like auras. A lot of the time in the old skill system, you'd throw a few gems together in a 4-link with few or no support gems. How can you do that when you have a limited number of active skill slots? The answer is meta gems. Meta gems are like super support gems that let you put multiple actives into them. For example, we want to run a few different auras on this character. We can put this proficiency gem into the character and load it up with auras. It even lets you bind a single key to enable all of the auras at once. Trigger gems like Cast on Crit are also meta gems, so this means you can put an entire Cast on Crit setup into one gem as one of your eight six links.
One of the things we really wanted to improve in Path of Exile 2 was our lighting system. The new PBR rendering, in addition to a much more realistic light falloff, makes this area look significantly more awesome than what we could possibly achieve in the past. Make them stop! They're whispering! They're screaming! No, don't give in! You're not dead! You're still moving! You're still here! <laughs> One of the things that's really exciting about creating an entirely new campaign is that we get to apply all of our boss creation skills to early bosses as well. The first few acts of Path of Exile 1 have bosses that are some of the earliest content we ever made and their age is really showing. This fight here is the same level as the Fairgrove's fight in the original campaign, but it's a lot more advanced. to let go of your burdens. So here we are in the hunting grounds. Now we're going to show you something that players have been requesting for a really long time. In Path of Exile 2, we finally have shapeshifting. Each shapeshift form can use any regular Path of Exile attack that makes sense. Here on the Werewolf, we're using Leap Slam and Cleave. 
One of the other things we thought that was really important with shapeshifting is that you could just change back and forth at any time, walking around in the middle of a skill whenever, just hit the button and go. One of the things you can see in this area is the new grass tech that we have. It's done using pre-computed ray tracing. It's both way nicer looking and has better performance than what we used to have before. And that there is a small slice of Path of Exile 2.